Two examples on the same screen? We can do it. Which one do you want to do first? You want to go crazy and do 14.15 first? No, no, let's not get crazy. 14.14. Consider the following reaction at equilibrium. All right, so we got calcium, calcium carbonate in equilibrium with calcium oxide and CO2. What is the effect of adding additional CO2 on the reaction mixture? So let's increase the concentration. Okay. So what is the effect? I don't know. So just, is it going to shift to the left or to the right? Shifts left. Good. So I'm increasing the concentration of a product. And yes, that would indeed shift to the left. It would increase the reverse reaction rate. Yep, exactly. So let's number these. Now number two. What is the effect of adding additional CaCO3? So we add some COC, CaCO3. Shift to the right. So shift to the right. What? I, I wrote shifts to the right. No, no, I wrote no effect. Why? Why doesn't it affect? It's a solid. Oh, that tro, that tricky tro. He threw a solid in there. We don't write solids in our equilibrium constant, do we? Because they don't affect equilibrium. So no effect. It, yeah, the mass, but it's not going. It would be a zero order reactant. What would be the equilibrium constant expression for this equilibrium system? What would our K equal? Yeah, just CO2. That's all it would be, CO2. The other two are solid, so they wouldn't uh, be written. That was a tricky one, tricky tro. With his acetone and solid CO2. Not jealous or anything. Uh, at certain, I bet I don't know if it does that at okay room temperature, but I, at a certain temperature, I bet it does. It might do it at room temperature. I don't know. Calcium carbonate. Yeah. Um, I know. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, because that's the only re only molecule that it will affect the equilibrium. We don't write solids. So both of those are solids. So they're not going to affect their equilibrium. Ammonium carbonate uh, decomposes um, to ammonia and CO2 at room temperature. And if, I, if you kept that in a sealed container, it would eventually set up equilibrium. I bet ammonia would start to react with CO2 convert ammonium carbonate. All right, that was a fun one. So let's try out the fourteen point one five since it's right here. I mean, that's. Oh, I see. Now you're on the lookout for solids. That's good. <coughs> Got your head on the swivel. What are those solids? All right. What is the effect of decreasing the volume? So we decrease the volume. Which way is that going to shift the equilibrium? To the left, KClO3, or to the right? Decrease the volume. To the least number of moles of? Of gas. So which side has the least moles of gas? The left side. How many moles of gas do we have on the left? Zero. How many do we have on the right? Three. Gas. The solid. Oh, again. again with the solids. So yeah, so zero is less than three. Should we write that down?
So yeah, so even though there's no gases, that's zero, that's less. So which way would that shift? Left. Shifts left. Zero versus three. Number two, increasing the volume. What would happen if I increased the volume? So which way, shift left or shift right? Right. So it shifts right towards the three, the three moles of gas, the higher number. But I know over there we have two and three, or now we don't count solids? Don't count solids, just moles of gas. Just, just for the volume and pressure. That's what we, because you're affecting, effectively affecting the concentration of the gases by changing the volume. Uh, not for um, the pressure volume changes. Pressure volume changes are only going to affect the gases. So, in fact, let's go back in time and pretend I made a bigger uh, deal of this. Okay, so let's underline. So moles of gas, moles of gas. That's the key. And we're, you know, effectively looking for moles. It's always for the gas. And I'll just edit that what I said now back to the original video. So it looks like I was really trying to help you out early on. All right, so the third one is adding an inert gas. No, oh, okay. <coughs> they tried to leave an hour ago. So, it's, um, so an inert gas, what does inert mean? doesn't react, okay? So they threw that in there just to make sure you're not going to think, okay, it could react with one of these uh, reactants or products and change its concentration, okay? So it's just inert. It's not going to mess with it, okay? But adding a gas to a constant volume, so the volume is not going to change, you might think that that's going to affect the pressure. So we're increasing the pressure. But it turns out that's not going to impact our equilibrium because that would be the total pressure. Okay? The equilibrium systems, if we put it in terms of case of P, that's when we use partial pressures. So the partial pressures of the products or partial pressures of the reactants. Okay? So adding an inert gas would increase the total pressure of the system, but not the partial pressure of O2. So that wouldn't affect its equilibrium. Okay? So no effect. You won't react with oxygen? No, that's why we said inert. Not going to react. So like argon. Threw in some argon. Argon's not going to react. <coughs> I'm sorry? Well, then po potentially it could react with oxygen or maybe one of the other molecules and change their concentration. And then if it's reacting with them and changing the concentration, yeah, it's definitely going to uh, impact uh, rates. Okay. So no effect. Um, so the, what do I want to say? So the equilibrium, equilibrium system is only disturbed by changes to the partial pressures. That reminds me, so they changed the clock in here. Just yesterday, just walking around my house, just trying to figure out if that clock is right. Is it really two or is it three? I look at my watch, I'm like, did I set my watch? It was a struggle yesterday. I broke my watch trying to set it yesterday. Just pulled it all out. Yeah, that's new. New feature. <laughs> all right, so uh, one last thing. <laughs> Uh, to talk about 
is remember when uh, we set this up, this talk of equilibrium, we talked about the equilibrium system between hemoglobin. Okay, so hemoglobin binds the oxygen and it's reversible, so it sets up equilibrium. All right. And we said in our lungs, hemoglobin preferentially binds to oxygen. Mm -hmm. And then it carries it to your cells, where your cells are doing cellular respiration, and it preferentially releases oxygen in your cells. And so the one thing that we uh, said we'd be able to figure out by the end of this chapter is, how does hemoglobin know to bind to oxygen in our lungs, and how does it know to release it when it gets to our cells? Okay? It turns out it doesn't know anything. It's just a small, you know, it's a molecule. Okay, it's not a small molecule. It's a pretty big protein complex, but it doesn't know anything, right? Well, actually, it has to just do with concentrations. Okay, so in our lungs, all right? So in our lungs, okay, all right, our diaphragm causes our volume of our lungs to expand. What happens to the pressure? inside our lungs with the volume expands. It goes down. So the volume expands, pressure goes down. So air, which is that higher pressure, just follows that pressure gradient. So air comes into our lungs. <sighs> well, I breathe out. Just breathe, just breathe in. <laughs> That's what happens. Okay? So in our lungs, air is coming in, and the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere is like almost 20%, right? 21%? Um, so the partial pressure of oxygen um, in uh, the lungs is greater than the concentration of partial, the partial pressure of oxygen in our blood. Okay. So in our lungs, we've got this equilibrium system where we just took a breath in. Oxygen's coming in. So what happens to the concentration of oxygen? It goes up. <coughs> Which way is that going to shift the equilibrium? To the right. So hemoglobin preferentially binds the hemoglobin because the concentration of oxygen is really high. It shifts the equilibrium to the right. Now in our cells, okay, where we're using up oxygen, it's a reactant in cellular respiration, right? We're reacting it with something, 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 glucose, and something, something, something. I mean, I know all about that cycle. Um, but we're definitely reacting oxygen, right? So what's happening to the concentration of oxygen during cellular respiration? It's going down. Yeah, our cells are using it up, okay? And so which way does the equilibrium going to shift? To the left. So in our cells where we need the oxygen, where we're using up the oxygen, the equilibrium is shifting to the left. So hemoglobin preferentially releases the oxygen so we can use it. So that's how hemoglobin knows what to do. It just depends on what environmental conditions it's in. If it's got lots of oxygen in our lungs, it shifts to the right, binds to it. If it is uh, in this, near our cells where our oxygen concentration is low, it's going to release it. Okay. 